So hello again. I thought I'd do another foraging video because I finally found something else in Butte Park that I've been looking for. And well this is <laughs> this is as close as I can get to interacting with people these days, so I thought just in case anyone else needs another hobby to pass the time so I can get you out of doors a bit, I will share some of my findings and ideas with you. So this today I'm looking for sorrel. And I finally found it. It's easily confused with dock, unfortunately. It looks a bit similar, but there's a telltale sign with sorrel. I will just show you the ones I've found. So here they are. You can see all the little uh, flower and seed heads there. And the leaves here. And sorrel leaves, the most giveaway thing about them I can just show you a big one here. There's a nice large one here. Is they've got little pointy ends here that often wrap around the stem. There's an only one other plant that you have to look out for that has similar leaves called Lords and Ladies, which is actually toxic, but it looks it just looks nothing like these, so the chances of getting them mixed up are very small. And the other thing with sorrel, if I can just find a fresh looking leaf, is it has a very distinctive taste, which I personally really, really like, which is why I'm planning to make the soup out of it. So there we go, there's sorrel leaf I've just picked there. So, <laughs> if I have picked correctly, it will taste quite sharp and citrusy and a bit like apple peel. And in Impossible chance these are, lords and ladies, it will make me horribly sick, but it won't. Huh? Oh yes, that is definitely sorrel. It tastes absolutely gorgeous. So now I have to pick about 30 of these leaves for my recipe. So that could be pretty dull to watch. So <laughs> just in closing I will say go for the fresh looking leaves, the young looking leaves. And don't take don't take too many. I'd say just take a couple off each plant because the last thing you want to do is is kill off the plants. That would be nasty. And there's plenty to go around. I can see loads more of it over there and I know there's more into the park. Sorrel is very common. So just as long as you know what those leaves are you're looking for and the general shape of it, it's an easy one to forage. So I'm going to go looking for some hedge garlic after I've got my sorrel, so I will let you go for now. And I will come back to you in a few minutes of my time and a few milliseconds of yours. Mm. Hello again. I have, while well, looking for my hedge garlic, I've actually found an example of that plant I was talking about earlier, the Lords and Ladies, the toxic one that might just be mistaken for sorrel. But I don't think it, it's very likely. It's not a great example, it's, it's withered back a lot, but I'll show you what's left of it. So, you can see the only real resemblance is that sort of spearhead or arrow shape of the leaf with these points at the back. But A, it's a, it's a huge leaf, sorrel leaves. I've not seen many that big. And though it's really shriveled, if I could unroll the leaves a bit, you can see the end isn't quite as sharply pointed as the sorrel leaves, it's actually quite rounded. It doesn't have a flower anymore, it's sometimes, when, it, when it's in flower, it's quite, it's quite pretty actually, but um, yeah, <laughs> prettiness in this case is just a disguise for a really poor and nasty, nasty toxic personality, or chemistry anyway, so that's what's left of the flower, it's just shriveled down like that, but again sorrel has nothing like that. Right, I have finally found my hedge garlic. I had to climb over an awful lot of sticky sticky cleavers to get to it, unfortunately, but, um, well, I shouldn't complain because cleavers are actually edible as well, but we'll go on to them some other time, shall we? Um, it's taken me a long time to find this, longer than I thought, <laughs> but the good news is with hedge garlic, when you found it, it's not easy to mistake for anything else. So let's take a look at it. So. Here we have a nice one. So we've got this little bit of small clump of white flowers on the top of it and the leaves are also very distinctive serrated kind of mid mid green 
triangular and it's pretty tall you can see it can grow quite tall and quite large clumps which is good because it means you can always gather as much as you need from one place if you're in any further doubt though one easy thing you can do is just take one of the leaves crush it between your fingers and smell it and then if you like the smell of garlic you'll have a pleasant experience and if you're a vampire you'll you'll probably be all right actually because it's not garlic it just depends on how well you know your botany i suppose so i'm only going to take uh a little of this i don't want it to actually overwhelm the soup it's just i've put garlic in nearly everything and since this is supposed to be a wild food recipe i'm cooking i thought i'd i'd use a wild substitute for my garlic so again don't take more than a couple of leaves off each plant i would say and again go for go for fresh looking leaves probably smaller looking leaves just avoid anything that looks like it's been eaten away or looks a bit withered and you should be fine so that's it for now that's sorrel and that's hedge garlic i hope you've i hope you've enjoyed this a little bit and maybe it's given you some ideas for passing your quarantine if you're lucky enough to live in an area with a decent sized parkland and i <laughs> well i hope the just hope the authorities of course are understanding of people's need to go out to places like this i'm very lucky i know that i'm very lucky living in cardiff and having so much green space around but it's i'm pretty nervous out here because there have been not just the police coast guard vans passing by helicopters overhead it feels very weird but still i wouldn't miss these little excursions this is healing time for me getting closer to nature and of course you know just in case <laughs> the economy goes completely department tax goes through the roof now i can feed myself to an extent free <laughs> so that's it for now um don't know what i'll do next if i'll do another of these but there's a world of possibilities there's so many plants i have yet to discover so hopefully see you again then bye for now